tensions are rising in the Middle East after the U.S. carried out a second strike against the Iran-backed Houthi militia in Yemen last night, with the Navy firing Tomahawk cruise missiles at a Houthi radar site. It comes just one day after U.S. and British forces hit more than 60 targets in Yemen in response to weeks of Houthi attacks on vital shipping routes in the Red Sea. The Houthis say they are acting in solidarity with Palestinians in the Israel-Hamas war, and they are vowing a, quote, strong and effective response to U.S. airstrikes. Joining me now, Congressman Gregory Meeks, ranking member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Uh, Congressman Meeks, as always, thank you very much for coming to the Saturday show. With these strikes, do you think the United States is already in a proxy war with Iran? No, and thank you for having me, Jonathan. No. Uh, look, uh, what we had was um, uh, the Houthis uh, being worn, as well as Hezbollah uh, and Iran. Uh, there's no indication that Iran wants to get into a war with the United States. But as the president had warned over and over again to Houthis not to get involved, not to uh, uh, escalate anything, otherwise they will feel the, the cost of it. And we had those 20 or so uh, attacks uh, last Tuesday. Uh, and so, therefore, uh, you saw that self-defense and you saw the United States do and go after with a very limited strike uh, going after certain targets uh, to prevent them from uh, continuing to do uh, and try to disturb the economy of the world, really, for that matter, mm -hmm. because that's what they were doing in the Red Sea. You know, Congressman, there's been some bipartisan criticism of the president for authorizing the strikes without congressional approval. Shouldn't he have come to Congress first? Were, were you consulted? Yeah, I was consulted. I was told before the strikes, as well as the uh, chairman and ranking members of all of the pertinent committees. Uh, and as I said, so this is a classic Article II uh, authority that I believe that the uh, president uh, was able and, and executed on. So we were given notice. I fully anticipate as we move forward uh, that we will continue to be in contact with the administration and learning whatever the long range plans are, because if in fact there is something that seems to be escalating and it will be long range, then definitely I think that there is uh, has to be con consultation with the United States Congress and get our approval. But there's Article Two provisions where we are defending ourselves from the immediate attack that took place just last Tuesday mm -hmm. on uh, in the Red Sea and on uh, commercial United States commercial ships, uh, as well as some of our, of, the, of our allies. You know, Congressman, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin ordered the airstrikes from his hospital bed while re receiving treatment for prostate cancer. Some Republicans are calling for the secretary to be fired for not disclosing his diagnosis sooner. I is that a stretch? It's all, you know, the Republicans just, oh, that's all they do because they haven't accomplished anything. I mean, your segment last, uh, last segment with my friend and colleague Yvette Clark was just that. What have they done since they've been in the majority? Nothing other than uh, taking 16 times to elect a speaker, then getting rid of that speaker, then going on, a, you know, basically shutting the government down, and now we're faced with that. So they're doing and trying to mask and come up with nonsense, uh, the MAGA Republicans, uh, that just hurts the American people. If you can name one thing that they've done, since they've been in the majority, just one, as you heard, even themselves on the floor said they've accomplished nothing since they've been given the majority, uh, won the majority in the last election. You know, Congressman, let me get you on one more thing before we have to go. Taiwan's presidential election. Uh, the candidate from Taiwan's anti-China Democratic Progressive Party won. So what do you think this means for relations between China, Taiwan and the United States? Well, look, number one, I think that democracy happened in Taiwan. I mean, the, the Taiwanese people spoke, and they spoke loudly. Uh, and so we look forward to continuing to work uh, and uh, with uh, Taiwan and our ally and do what we need to do uh, in that regards. And we continue to talk to the Chinese also. They, you know, it's troubling some of the things that they've said, uh, but we're going to watch them very closely, particularly between now and May, when the president would be uh, and, and, and inducted. Uh, but, you know, um, I am also pleased at what took place in San Francisco, for example, between uh, President Biden and President Xi. There's some commitments that were made. There's more dialogue uh, that has to happen. So I'm still, I'm, you know, as you said, the former chair, ranking member of the 
Foreign Affairs Committee, where diplomacy is really important. And so uh, I want to push forward with the diplomatic uh, exchanges, uh, knowing that we also have a military backup. But diplomacy is a uh, dialogue and conversation is tremendously important, and we'll continue in that vein. All right, Cong Congressman Gregory Meeks, ranking member of the House of Foreign, uh, uh, the, the Foreign Relations, Foreign Affairs, Foreign Affairs Committee. Uh, as always, thank you for coming on the show, especially since I know you have a very special guest who kept you from coming in, coming in studio, but staying at home. A granddaughter? Granddaughter, my fourth granddaughter. I have three oh. daughters, four granddaughters. I'm a lucky man. <laughs> Congressman Gregory Meeks, hug that granddaughter for me. Have a good evening. Thank you.